by any stretch. But uh, we, you know, we made, we've made progress. One of the things that's unusual about spring football, and it's everywhere, is you've got different lineups every day. You know, you've got guys you're either holding out that are a little bit banged up, probably could play in a real game. And then you've got guys that you're just missing because they are coming off off-season surgery or whatever. So, you know, I don't think we've, well, I know for a fact we've never had even close to our best 11 on the field. It's good for the other guys, you know, because you're developing your depth. But uh, sometimes you get some personnel mismatches out there. We've got a lot of scheme in, uh, probably too much scheme and not enough execution for where we, where we need to be. Malachi, um, what's impressed you most about him over you know, practice one, practice 13, coach? Yeah, he's improved a lot. Uh, you know, first off, for being a new guy and playing quarterback and being in a room with other quarterbacks that all knew the system. So, you know, he's coming in where we use the same ver verbiage that they had before. So it was all new to him and he was he was lost swimming in terminology for for a while there. Uh, you know, you can you can see his ability as a thrower. It shines through uh, him just learning how everything is done at Boise State has been an adjustment, but but he's working on it. Uh, made made progress, but again, like a lot of guys, just not not where we need to be right now. Last time we talked to you, you, you talked about uh, had you never even seen him throw, and you were going to show up on spring day, mm -hmm. camp number one. What was your initial thought when you saw him throw, him, and, and how did you kind of process his throwing? Yeah, you can you can see. I mean, he can spin the ball. All right, the, the the kid can spin it, and he can make throws from off balance platforms. Now that can be a, a a blessing at times, and it can be a curse at times. Like it was, there was a curse a couple times today. Uh, but but the guy can throw it, and he can throw it accurately for sure. Each of the three quarterbacks, Tiller, uh, Madsen, and uh, Malika, how do you think each one has improved the most? All right. Well, let's start with Madsen. I mean, he's he's the hardest because he's bored out there right now. He can only do seven on seven and individual. So. There's a guy who, who has proved that he can play at this level. He sees our offense struggling at times and knows he could make it better, but there's, he's helpless. Like we get in those 11 on 11 drills and you know, we, we got our faces kicked in at times today and you know, he, he wants to help. So mm -hmm. you know, he's, he's frustrated more than anything. I think uh, you know, he's just licking his chops to get out there in the fall. Uh, C, CJ. You know, CJ has definitely got enough talent to be the quarterback here. CJ sometimes makes the hard plays and misses on the easy plays. So just consistency mm -hmm. is where he's working hardest and, and in the leadership realm. And he's working on both, but again, none of us are where we need to be. And then Malachi, uh, just being able to process it faster. And, and again, part of that is like he's going from Spanish to French, so he's learning a new language, and that's that's to be expected. Do you see in August this being a, a one-two-three battle, a one-two battle? How do you kind of envision fall? Uh, you know, the staff and Coach Danielson, they'll be you know they'll be looking at that as you know the evaluation process of spring happens more next week, but. Uh, you know, we'll still have competition at the position because, you know, as we as we just sit today, none of us are playing good enough. So I'm, that means I'm not coaching them good enough. And, uh, you know, we'll we'll get it straightened out in the fall. You talk about that terminology with Malachi, you know, it, it, compared to a normal recruit when they or normal transfer when they come in. How do you feel like he's doing on that learning curve? Well, that, that's that's just it. I mean, you kind of answered your own question when it like a freshman comes in and it's all new. Usually he doesn't come in with the, the hype that Malachi came in with as, you know, as highly recruited as he was. And so everyone had ex this expectation that Malachi was going to come in here and set it on fire. And that's tough for any quarterback when they don't know the terminology. I mean, like they, he told me, he tells me all the time, okay, at, at USC we called this XYZ and here we call it goobly gotch or something like that. It's just, it, and there's a whole bunch of words. I mean, there's a whole lot of goobly gotch going on out there. Like a lot of countries in the team, uh, a lot, like a lot, a lot of teams. See, I got you speaking different language. <laughs> right, right there. If that's a good question, Malachi. Good question. <laughs> like a lot of teams in the country, you guys are experimenting with in helmet communication this this spring, right? Yeah. Uh, you're a guy who's experienced experienced having to relay calls in as a college OC and the direct communication in the NFL. Mm -hmm. How much of a game changer was that for you in the NFL? That direct communication. Yeah, it's nice. It's nice because you can talk directly to the quarterback, and you don't have to rely on signals. 
you know, there's a lot of talk in college football about sign stealing and now with iPads on the sideline this year, they're saying that sign stealing is going to be even more rampant. So that's one thing that you don't necessarily have to rely, you know, that could go away if we wanted to by just everything comes through the quarterback. Now, I would imagine with this being a new system to college football that there'll be some kinks in it along the way. So probably can't abandon your signals quite yet. I'm guessing that it could be even more beneficial at this level, right? I mean, you're not working with Matt Ryan out there, so are you able to tell guys, hey, look for pressure here, or look for look look at this this matchup here? Yeah, we are, and that's a fine line though between talking to him too much, mm -hmm. and uh, and I'm fighting that right now some because I'm wanting to tell him stuff to make it better for the offense, and sometimes you just got to let him go and let him play. The other thing, I don't think it's been determined yet in college football. You know, in the NFL, it cuts off at 15 seconds, mm -hmm. and Right now, no one's given me a straight answer if, if they've really finalized that for college. So if, if you can talk to them all the way down to the snap, uh, that's going to be that's going to be interesting if it does go that way. How many different voices are there? Is it just you and the quarterback, or do more are people on it? Yeah, for uh, they're saying that when it gets to real football, it'll just be one person. We have we're, we have our headset set up right now so two people can, and we're we're working with some different people talking in different periods just for our own coaching experience. Uh, but for the most part right now, we're working with two, Nate Potter and myself. Mike asked you about the QB competition. How do you, when a guy like uh, Maddox is not able to do everything, how do you have to keep yourself from not thinking too highly of another guy and remembering that he's coming back in August and what he's done? And how do you factor in an injured guy when you're, when you're looking at you know, how guys are doing this spring? Oh, I have very good memories of, Mal of Maddox, so I don't have too much problem with that. The, you know, the one thing about that, is, no, this is a, a simple thing, is we have real game film of him playing. All I got to do is put on that film and, and watch him play. Like, playing in a real game and executing in a real game is way different than executing in practice. Do you, do you see all three, I mean, all three, with, with nowadays with NIL and transfer portal and all this, I mean, do you see all three, Mike asked me, do you see in August 1st, like, all three guys still being here, or do you at the end of the spring? Yeah. How do you look at the, who's yeah, third? We don't, we don't know that for sure. And like I said, uh, Coach Danielson actually started this week, and it will go into next week meeting with every player individually. Position coach-wise, we'll meet with our guys next week. But that, that whole portal thing, that, that throws a wrench into it. I mean, heck me. Who knows what's going to happen at, at the end of these two weeks. Just in terms of the offense and what you're seeing, it, it sounds like the inconsistencies are there, frustrations sometimes here and there, which is typical in this period. It doesn't sound like it. It is. It is. What is it specifically that, that frustrates you at the end of the day when, when you're trying to get yeah. this thing taken care of? Okay, that, that's a great question. And it re it's really two things. Uh, individual breakdowns. That, that's what makes football so cool is, you know, it takes all 11 guys. If the left guard breaks down on a certain play, the whole play is shot. Uh, everything could be perfect and the receiver run the wrong route. Uh, that play is shot. So individual breakdowns and then just, you know, the defense gives us some hard looks. The defense is experimenting with a lot of different stuff. So they give us some defenses that are tough. Okay, that's understandable and that will help us grow in the long run. But we're missing plays at times that are easy looks like, you know, the guy's wide open in the flat and we miss him or we're running inside zone and we fumble the snap. Like that's just stuff that, you know, no matter what level of football you're playing, you can't you can't have that. And it's just happening too often right now. The wide receiver room in terms of I mean, every day, somebody's a different star. You got a lot of depth there, a lot of tools to play with. How have you seen the development of that room over the last two weeks? Well, again, we I think it's uh, at least four scholarship receivers that really haven't practiced at all. So it's given a lot of guys on the bottom end of the depth chart a chance to get reps they wouldn't get. Uh, you know, Latrell coming back. Latrell, you know, leading receiver two years ago. He definitely missed football. Uh, he, he was out today, but from a leadership standpoint and a setting an example standpoint, uh, he, he's done well. The guy, the guy that's had it, probably had the best spring overall is Austin Bolt. You know, it, you know Austin, a couple years ago, I thought he was just destined for stardom. He had that unfortunate, very unfortunate injury at Oregon State that really, you know, really set him back. That was a severe injury. And he's just now getting back to doing things that he was doing a couple years ago. And I mean, he's he makes plays every single day out there that you know a lot of guys can't make. When you look at Matt Lauder, uh, his high school film was really exciting. Looks like he's done a lot of the special things this spring. What have you seen out of him so far on the field? On yeah, the field? Uh, so that's one of those things that, uh, you know, he's been kind of fighting a nagging hamstring. So, he, you know, just being out there. Uh, one of the things we, we like to joke about is the number one ability in football is availability. 
And so there's been days Matt hasn't been available. Today was one of those days. When he's been out there, he's played really well. I mean, he's improved immensely as a blocker. He can really run for a guy his size. Uh, so he can, he can run routes and go out there and go against the DBs like he's a wide receiver, but he's, you know, 6'4", 240. We've heard at uh, running back that uh, Gaines and Dubar have both had good springs. What yeah. have you seen from them? Very impressive for two young guys. Not only running the ball and uh, yards after contact. It, I know you guys weren't able to come to the scrimmage, but we didn't, we didn't have enough explosive plays in the scrimmage, but those four, five, six-yard runs, oh, man, those two guys – uh, they're both impressive and they're both physical and pass pro. Like when I watched games last year, I thought, I thought Breezy was, was lacking in pass pro. He's, he's definitely improved. And Sire, for a 17-year-old kid, wow, he, he is off to a great start. Steve Cooper, uh, your quality control guy, mm -hmm. and he's been a high-level OC. What's he bringing to the table and how do you, how do you find this guy? Yeah, actually, uh, it's a crazy story on Coop. When, when my son Davis first went to Portland State as a quarterback, Coop was the quarterback coach and the OC at Portland State. And uh, then he, he went with Scott Frost in Nebraska, and then Bush found him. Uh, Bush, Boise State lost their QC guy, and I'm not sure how he and Bush connected exactly, but from a small world department, his, his girlfriend is the cheerleader dance coach at Boise State, so it was, it was nice for, for Coop to get to <laughs> come back and after I think he said seven or eight years together they actually get to live in the same city but Coop's he's a sharp guy helps out a lot how much do you focus on the offensive line in the spring and what do you see there especially a right tackle yeah oh, I'm glad you brought that up Mike because uh, you know there's been a lot of talk about the four returning starters and what's going to happen at right tackle uh, two guys uh, first off Hall Schmidt we're thin at tackle this spring just because we've lost a couple other guys to injury. But Hall Schmidt has really risen to the occasion and uh, has taken a ton of reps at right tackle. And then uh, Kyle, is it Young? Is that his last name? Cox. 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 Kyle Cox. Kyle Cox, number 70. He's been playing backup left tackle, but uh, another young guy that redshirted. I, I feel really good about about our top three tackles. And you see those, those four that we think are established? Is, I mean, I know there's always competition, but is that your plan to stay with you? Do you like what you see from those four? Oh, the other four? Stars? Well, two, two of them aren't out there oh, right that's now. True, yeah. But that's, you know, two of them aren't out there. But those guys played a lot of football uh, last year. And so <clears throat> that's really just helped us develop. We have pretty good depth at the inside three positions. We just were, we were a little thin at tackle, you know, with Beresford being a, a starter here and taking every snap for the last two years. Right tackle was the biggest question. I, I, feel, I feel solid about that right now.